Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Rancher to install a Kubernetes cluster inside of your vSphere lab. Let's get started. So Rancher is another popular UI interface for streamlining the installation of a Kubernetes cluster within a multitude of environments. So here on the screen, you can see that I actually already have Rancher running inside of a Docker container uh, inside of my SDDC lab. So I'm going to go ahead and walk us through a couple of the steps as we get ready to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. The first thing that you want to do is actually go to Google and type in Ubuntu 20.04 cloud image. We're going to need to download an OVA file to be able to use for our VMs that are going to get instantiated by Rancher. So just go ahead and do that search. Click on focal here under the cloud images options. Go to current and then scroll down until you see the OVA here, right here, amd64.ova. Go ahead and download that, add it into your vSphere environment like you would any other OVA, and then convert it to a template. As we look here inside of my lab itself from a vCenter view, you can see that I have my Ubuntu 20.04 cloud image template. And we're going to go ahead and be using that inside of our Rancher UI to specify it as the image to use when it deploys the virtual machines. Um, just real quickly, you can see here that I've got, I've pre created a Rancher folder where I'm going to actually be putting the virtual machines. And then I actually have an Ubuntu server that I have that is running the Docker container for Rancher. Um, all you have to do is download uh, the Docker container, run it locally, and then be able to bring up the, the UI, which you see in this screen. So after you do the first login, it'll prompt you for a password to specify for using later. Um, and then this is the first page that you see. And it's actually running a K3S cluster locally on that Docker container, and that's what's running the UI for us. But before we get started, let me just show you quickly from a networking perspective what I have set up. So in NSX, as you've probably seen in some of my other videos, I have my tier zero, which is BGP peering up with my Cisco Catalyst switches in the lab. And I've created a tier one specifically for Rancher and a corresponding segment uh, that we'll be using. Um, I've also enabled DHCP um, on the tier one so that I can get DHCP addresses for the VMs that Rancher is going to be installing. So pretty simple, nothing special going on here, no DFW rules or anything like that right now. So let's go over here to our Rancher UI. And as we go here, you click up here on the menu, you go over to cluster management. You can see again, it has the little bit of a management cluster that's running locally. The first thing we need to do is actually add some credentials. Now, I've already gone ahead and added the credentials specific for my lab, but what you would do here is just create, click Create, and then you can see Amazon, Azure, Google, a bunch of others. You come over here to vSphere, give it the name, the URL for your vCenter server, as well as the username and password that you're using and the port, and then go ahead and that'll create the cloud credentials for you. Like I said, I've already done that. And then the next step that you want to do is actually create an RKE node template. Okay, so again, you can see that I've done one, but what you would just do is go ahead here and click Add Template. Again, pick what you're doing, right? We're going to do vCenter. So you go ahead and click the cloud creds that you just created. You specify the data center, the resource pool that you want it to go into, what data store you want the uh, virtual machines to be created on, the folder, again, Rancher is the one that I had pre-created. And then for the host, you can leave this as any if you're pointing it to a cluster in the resource pool. Or if you want the virtual machines to go to a specific uh, ESXi host, you can do that as well. And then you specify the instance options that you want here. And then uh, everything else can basically be left as the default. One thing that I will show you that I've done in my template is I've actually added in a SSH key in the cloud config YAML. So I have an SSH key sudo settings as well so that I have access to the virtual machines. 
Again, this is the network that I have created in NSX, so VE-Rancher-1. Okay, and then that's going to go ahead and do it. And then I've also, I've increased the size of the virtual machines themselves from two and two vCPU and four gigs of memory to four CPUs and, and eight gigs of memory. So that's all that you have to do from a template perspective. Okay, and then you do an RKE template, and this will just do the same thing. It's just linking back to that template that we just created. And at this point, you're actually ready to go ahead and deploy a Kubernetes cluster using Rancher. So come over here to clusters, click create. Again, multiple options, find the vSphere tile. All right, give your cluster a name. And then you can give it prefixes for the uh, controllers and the different node types that you're going to use. And then you can add one for the workers as well. Now what you want to do is you can specify the count. We'll leave just one controller just to do initially because I want to show some of the scale up, scale up lifecycle options that we have. But we will go ahead and create three of the workers. All right, and then again, using the template that we created, we want the workers to be auto-replaced if there's a problem, and we want them to be drained before they're deleted. Now for the controllers, we need to uncheck worker. We need to make sure that it's specified for etcd and the control plane. And then that's it. There's our cluster. Those are the virtual machines that it's going to create. We're going to tell it that we want to use an existing template. Again, that's the one we created a few moments ago. Version 1, which is the default. Again, it tells us that it's going to be installing Kubernetes 1.25.9. It's going to be using Calico as the CNI. All right, and then we're not using a private registry or anything like that. And then we can leave all of these advanced options uh, by, uh, at the defaults for this initial cluster creation. We go ahead here and we click Create. And then in just a moment, this will update to show that it's creating the cluster. If we look over at the vCenter view here, in just a moment, it's going to trigger. And there we see it doing the clones. There's three workers. There's the controller. It's going to clone that virtual machine pretty quickly and then power on those virtual machines for us. Stay here for just a moment and watch it do this. It's powering them all on. And then if we go back over to our Rancher view now, you can see here it just says waiting for etcd in the control plane and worker nodes to be registered. But if we click on the cluster name itself, it'll show us a bit more detail. And then as it goes through the various stages of bringing these virtual machines online, we'll see the comments here start to change and then eventually it'll populate the IP addresses that it got from the DHCP server and tell us when all of the nodes are ready. Now depending on your environment and your speed of your storage and your hosts, this can take anywhere from 5 to 25 minutes. Um, typically in my environment it takes about 17 minutes for the cluster to become fully online and accessible. So we'll go ahead and just watch this cluster creation process while it runs. The cluster's now been deployed, as we can see here on the screen. And what we can do now is we can actually look at it and see it from a resourcing perspective. So if you go up here and you click on Explore Cluster and then select the cluster that you just created, now you can see it's running Kubernetes 125.9. It was created about 16 minutes ago. And then you can see that there are some pods, about 10% of the pods. And then we can see what's being used from a CPU and from a memory perspective. You can also see here in the events that there's actually still some of the setup going on internal to the cluster itself. Now, one of the things that we can do here is we can actually go back to cluster management view and we can click here on the three little dots and we can download the cube config file. So we'll go ahead and download the cube config file and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it over into 
my rancher virtual machine. So here's my rancher virtual machine. We'll go into cube. We'll vim the config file that I've copied in the back. Paste it in here. Save the file. Now we can do our cube cuddle get nodes. And you can see that we have one controller, three workers, running 1.25 to non, which is the exact same thing that the UI tells us. And we look at the pods that are running as things are still starting to start up. So it looks like a couple things, like the rancher webhook is still waiting to get started. So we'll go ahead and we'll let these things sort them things out. And while those things are still starting up in the background, we'll switch back over to the UI screen and then we'll show you some of the things that I found most useful uh, with Rancher and kind of a key differentiator, to be honest, um, from the raw Tanzu Kubernetes grid uh, UI that you get and you've seen in my other videos. So one of the interesting things here, so obviously this is from a cluster management perspective. If we click on it, um, we can see right now, you know, that we have one controller, we have three workers. So if we want to scale up the environment, we literally, all we have to do here is scale the pool up or scale the pool down. So if we want to add an additional worker, we go ahead and click scale up. You can see that it's going to provision. We'll switch over here to our vSphere view. Again, you'll see it cloning. Now that RKE1 dash worker dash four virtual machine, and it's going to bring that virtual machine online uh, smoothly for us automatically. So here it's actually powered it on. We'll go back to the rancher view again. Okay, and then again, we can watch this screen and it'll show us as it goes through and actually provisions an additional worker node. So that's pretty slick, nice and easy. Whereas with Tanzu Kubernetes Grid out of the box, we actually have to be on our bootstrap server and execute a CLI for that to happen. Again, not overly difficult, but because this is through a UI, uh, some users uh, might find this to be more intuitive and easier to use, and you don't have to remember all of the syntax required for a CLI like you do in Tanzu. So that's from a provisioning and a scale up perspective. Um, if we come over here and we go back to home and we just select the cluster. Now this is going to give us the viewpoint of what's running inside of the cluster. All right. And so one of the things that I found to be pretty interesting is the ability to add additional apps directly into the Kubernetes cluster. So Rancher comes pre-configured with a pr pretty significant number of third-party applications that you can deploy directly into your Kubernetes cluster just by clicking a button. So you can see we have a service mesh with Istio. We have some Prometheus information, monitoring, okay, with Grafana and Prometheus. Um, they have SRIOV. If you have to do some specific things with networking, they have the vSphere cloud provider interface and the cloud storage interface. So if you're backing this up and you want to have object storage directly on or persistent volumes directly on your data storage, you can do so. In addition, it has things like Kafka and Spark, Cassandra, Zookeeper, okay, Cert Manager. Okay, in addition to having things like Datadog. All right, some Dell specific things, as well as F5, Harbor, if you're going to run a local repository and not have it being run as a virtual machine, but you want run Harbor to actually run inside of your Kubernetes cluster, you can do that as well. Jenkins, okay, so you can build Jenkins straight into it. Kibana, it has Elasticsearch, MongoDB, Logstash, NAT services, Nginx, Ingress controller, and service mesh. So you can kind of see it's a rather long list here of additional packages that you can install directly into the cluster with just a click of a button. So I think this is one of the things that when I first deployed Rancher about a week ago, uh, I was most impressed by. 
And then you can go through here, you can see what the repositories. So if you have a third party repository or local repository that you want, uh, you can set that up as well. And then you can see currently, obviously it's a brand new cluster, so there's really nothing running in here, but you can see that you can actually have like a pod, nothing, but you can actually come over here, create a pod, tell it what container engine you want it to have to run and it'll go through and actually just create it right there. You can always edit it as YAML as well if you prefer to do it that way. So again, making things relatively simplistic from a UI perspective for, especially if you're just starting out with Kubernetes, Rancher certainly seems to be one way to be able to quickly uh, be able to get up and running within an environment. Now, one of the other things that I was most impressed by as well is its ability to be able to deploy out to public cloud. So AWS, GCE, AVS as well. Um, is, so if you have an account there, you can actually deploy using Rancher or Kubernetes cluster, and it will even interact with those uh, public cloud providers, uh, Kubernetes offerings. So AKS, uh, GKE, and so forth. So pretty slick little tool. We'll go back here for just a moment. As we look at the cluster management in that secondary node, should almost be done by now, I would think. So it looks like it's still provisioning. It's been about five minutes, and I will say that this is actually one of the things that I liked, that it's updating it in real time as we see it coming online. It's got the IP address already. It looks like it's doing the final steps of waiting for Kubernetes to register itself with this new worker. So we'll switch over to our lab view and we'll take a look at it from the perspective of KubeCuddle. So it's not quite here yet. So we'll give this just another moment. All right, now you can see that the last node that we just scaled up with is actually online. And so this is all that's really required to get started with Kubernetes using Rancher. From there, I encourage you to go through and play with it. It has monitoring tools and everything that you can leverage to be able to quickly install additional pods and applications running in the Kubernetes cluster. And you can, of course, always uh, deploy additional clusters as well. Um, you can do things like creating namespaces um, directly through the user interface as well to be able to streamline those operations as you learn how to use Kubernetes. Hopefully you found this video useful today as we walk through the steps required to leverage Rancher to deploy a Kubernetes cluster inside of a vSphere environment. Go ahead and like and comment below and let me know what you think. And if you love these videos and appreciate the content that I'm creating, feel free to go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below. And I look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks.